Hey everyone, so this episode is going to be a little different. I'm up here in North Carolina for the weekend and we're actually going to be working on neither a rotary or a jet ski again, but this Alfa Romeo Spider. Uh, the guy that I'm staying with, he actually got this car um, a little while back and I believe it sat for 20 something years. Uh, and he has been slowly getting it back on the road and today we are going to be completely redoing the brakes minus the master cylinder because I actually came up here for the rotary rally a few months ago and we already replaced the master cylinder back then. So today we'll be going through doing rotors, pads, lines, just soft lines not hard lines and then the car should be able to drive around a little bit more. So uh, we'll pick back up once we're taking one of the corners apart. Hey everyone, so we're going to be starting in the rear here. So I think first we might try and knock out, uh, changing out these brake pads. Which as you can see, they are tiny little brake pads. But the Italians did something good and they used a pin style uh, retainer. Uh, here you can actually see how small these things really are. Um, they are, they sure are tiny. <clears throat> then we'll also be replacing the soft lines, which now I don't really know which one is the right one from just looking in there. I had to guess it's probably this outer one is the one for the rear, but we'll be getting on that too. So I will go ahead and see if uh, I can take a small screwdriver or punch and just kind of tap these out and see if I can get these brake pads out and get the new ones in. Okay guys, so we're under here looking at the brake line. So this is the one that goes from the car to the axle. And this fitting's kind of strange. It's reversed from what I am used to seeing, but we'll see if I can get it cracked open and get this line off. So let's see if we can get a wrench on there. Okay, so just got the old line off. Uh, it's a little awkward uh, how it works. You have this nut right here, which threads onto the end of this line. Uh, and it like basically locks it. Uh, onto this little flange rather than you know the normal way of just having a hex cut out in the flange gosh uh, but that's how they did it so you gotta get this on tighten down then you can put your actual hard line back onto the line once this is tightened down which is why I have my thumb up on this line is to keep the brake fluid from just totally uh, draining out because we didn't want to drain the master to make sure we didn't have to bleed the master again because it was not fun to bleed that master so uh, I will <clears throat> let's in this section here because I'm gonna need to take both my hands and get this up. So actually I'll need Lund's hands back. So that's how you do this. Okay y'all, so you just saw me put on that soft line or at least start to get it on. Um, I did that incorrectly uh, in the video. You need to hook it up to the T-junction on the axle before you actually put it into that little mount because otherwise you won't be able to actually screw it into the axle. The hard line going in, that little fitting just spins down on it so the soft line doesn't need to spin. 
but when it's going into the axle, it needs to spin. So remember, hook it up to the axle first and then hook it up to the hard line. So got the brake line in there. Uh, got a very solid amount of brake fluid on me. Uh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Y'all should probably wear safety glasses and gloves and all that. I'm already gonna get all the cancers and everything because I've been doing this for too long. But, so to give y'all a better idea of what I was trying to say with this, this is the part that goes up to the bottom of the car. You can probably see here, so right here there was a nut. So this has a, this goes through a, a hole that is mounted to the car. And you have a lock nut that locks it to there. Then you have your hard line fitting that goes around this to lock it down. Um, normally how it would go is if you had like a, a mounting point on the car, it would be hex. You'd stick it in there and then you just put a clip in and that would hold it into the hex. So then you can just put your um, hard line in. And normally your hard line uh, would be the male part and your soft line would be the female part. And it would actually thread down into your soft line. So I had to figure that out. It was backwards from what I'm used to and the lock nut was really strange. But I got it on there. Then this side was fairly normal. It just went into the T-tongue junction on the diff. So now it's time to tackle these brake pads. So all we're basically gonna do, I think is just tap out these pins, pull these springs out, and then just slide the pads out. So I'll get back to y'all once we have these pads out. Okay, so we got the, the pads out. The uh, Here's the spring that held the pins in there. I uh, ended up actually just tapping them out using this Allen key. Um, but since we have a new rotor for it, we need the actual whole caliper to come off. Now, in all of Alpha's infinite brilliance here of not using soft lines to the caliper, it means you have to actually take the line off of the caliper to take the caliper off the car. So, I, it looks like it is a half inch, uh, to get this line off, um, Y'all may think this car is uh, metric, but it actually seems to be almost everything is English. So I will get this line up and then y'all can probably see back there. There's these two uh, larger bolts in here. You take those off and the caliper slide off so we can replace this rotor. So I'll go ahead and get this line up and then I'll take these two big bolts off the back. Okay guys, so I got the caliper off and went ahead and got the rotor off. So once you're in here, you can see this has a drum brake style uh, parking brake. Just maybe take a little bit of brake parts cleaner and just rub it over the uh, pads on here to clean it up a little bit. We're about to put the new rotor on. I just put a little bit of grease um, on the back side so the rotor doesn't stick. Any seems would be better, but we didn't have any. So now you can just slide the new rotor on there. Make sure it's lined up so that your screws go into their holes and it looks like it was. So now we can just take these screws, put them on in there. And so all these do they, is they just keep the rotor up to the flange. Normally um, <clears throat> they're more common on cars that don't have studs because it can keep the rotor from twisting on the hub when you're trying to put your wheel on and align your bolts and everything. So, um, as you can see here, uh, this is a little trick that I do sometimes if I need to leave a brake line off. If you cut the uh, finger off of a glove and then put it over your brake line and zip tight down, it kind of just holds the fluid in there. When you take it off, the fluid's going to come rushing back out, but it kind of keeps it from all immediately draining out while your caliper's not hooked up. So, now we will take this caliper and put it back on. Okay, so we just got it all put back together. The new rotor's on. The caliper is actually torqued spec. Um, not usually my thing, but, you know, for Lund, anything goes. Uh, put the 
Brake line back on. Now it's time to actually slide these new pads in. So literally all you do is you take these and you just kind of slide them. It should just slide in there. So when I'm sticking this in here, I'm pushing the piston back in. Which, the piston was already pushed back in, and it, it's pretty far in there, so why it's <coughs> not just going in there, it's a little confusing. Hey, there we go. Okay, do it on this side too. Take it, slide it in there, okay, now both the calipers are in there, now you just take your pins, wherever they went, here they are, we're going to take just a yep, tiny little bit of grease, and just dab it on these pins. Now, you need to make sure, don't just use wheel bearing grease, you need to use like an actual brake grease. This grease melts at a way higher temperature than wheel bearing grease does. This won't go and slide down into your, uh, your calipers. <clears throat> but don't put much on these pins because it, they slide pretty easy uh, on these, even without grease. And you really don't want this ending up actually on the braking surface because that would leave you for a pretty bad day so now there's a spring too which i don't where oh here's a spring so you gotta go ahead and I believe stick your spring in first then stick your pin in and you got to make it go through all the way to the other side. Which is a little tricky. Especially when your pad is not lining up perfectly. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking to see if it's lined up, which it is not. Uh, it's fairly close, so I'm just going to take something light and just kind of tap it to see if it can find its way. And there it went. It's finding its way home. Now let's stick this in there. And then we will get the second one started. Same deal, except now the spring's in there, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So you gotta get it over the, or get the spring underneath the pin. You can see like that. Now you just gotta tap it and make sure they kind of press in to this side. So I'll call that good there. Um, that's how you get the pads installed. Okay guys, so starting to get the brakes off here. So you gotta tap out these pins so you can get your uh, brake pads pulled out. You, you're probably gonna need to tap out the bottom one too. Uh, <coughs> the springs are fairly strong that hold it in there. Um, so most punches won't be able to punch them all the way out. You'll probably need the, there's Allen keys in the top of that toolbox right there. Just get one that fits through. And then you can just take that. 
here, you, you missed it. There you go, line it up, and you can punch these pins all the way out. So, as y'all can probably tell, we actually have one doing the work while I'm doing the filming this time. So, got those out. Now you should just be able to grab those pads and just slide them on out. So, if they're getting stuck like that, take it and just, I can't do it with my hand, just kind of push them out and that'll push the piston in just a little bit and it should give you some more space to pull these things out. Sometimes when I mean these pads have been in here for a really really long time, so you can actually that see it's got a little rust on the back and it's gotten stuck here. here. Hold this. Dang. Okay, so we're gonna pause the footage here. This one's a little stuck. Probably just gonna need to grab it with some pliers and pull it out. Okay, so got that uh, pad out. It was being a little bit of a nuisance. So one thing that is strange about these calipers or this whole brake system. So there is, sorry, it's a little dark. I forgot to see. There's a hard line right here that goes into this caliper. Here's the soft line. It goes into a hard line that then wraps around back into this caliper. We'll need to replace this soft line, but we have to replace that at the hard line right here. And to get the caliper off, we need to take this hard line out of the back of the caliper. So I'll do that uh, without the camera rolling because you're just not going to be able to see it since it's behind. And then we'll take the, this bolt and this bolt off and the caliper will slide off. So we'll go ahead and get those taken off. Okay, so as with most cars, uh, to replace the front uh, rotor, you have to get into the wheel bearings. So as you can see right here, this is our big retaining nut that holds the outer wheel bearing in just behind this washer. Uh, and you need to take that off to be able to get your uh, rotor off. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to take off these screws right here. This is what actually holds this front plate to the rotor. Um, then we will need to take out this lock nut. And whenever you do this, I suggest probably repacking your bearings. We're going to repack them. And uh, I'll show part of that process. I'll kind of show how you do it but i won't show everything because it's going to take a while uh, but to get this off make sure you get your cotter pin undone uh, be careful with it if you don't have another i don't really suggest reusing but i don't I haven't seen another one in all the kit and everything so i'm thinking we'll probably have to reuse this one dang sometimes they can be uh a little bit finicky when they're they've been in there for a while. I think I might have to oh there's no break to hold that. Okay, there's that cutter pin out. We may have to try and find another one. That one got a little mangled. But now you just, I mean, really, you can 
And that one's a little too tight to do with your fingers, but just take it. It shouldn't be very tight. Interesting, that one's, this one's reverse thread. Normally they're not reverse thread. Uh, another little Italian fun uh, thing to deal with here. So it probably actually was finger tight. I was just trying to turn it the wrong direction. Uh, so get this off. Then you will literally just want to kind of... I mean, it should just come off. It's not wanting to. I don't know why it's not wanting to. It should just... Whoa! Why is that not doing that? It goes to the washer. Because this just washers just so that that nut can press that bearing. There's a bearing right behind this. And the nut just presses it in. Normally, I mean, like what I'm doing, you know, in RX-7, it, once you take that nut off, it essentially just falls off. I mean, you, the way that I was just pulling, that would have just come off and smacked me right in the face. And I don't know why this one's not being the same way. Or why this washer is being a little bit of a turd. Do you have a magnet? Dang. I don't take it. There we go. So, but you can see, there's the bearing right there. So there literally should be nothing holding this in. That nut is what holds this whole assembly on. So I'm going to turn the camera off and keep pulling on this and see if I can get it off and I'll tell you how I got it off after. Okay, so you can see we got the whole hub off. Um, you can see here's your outer wheel bearing, which we don't have new ones, so we will be reusing that. But how I got it off was I actually took this long screwdriver and these right here are what the caliper mounts to. I just kind of stuck it in between and to the back of the caliper and just kind of gave it a quick boom and it popped off. It still had a fair bit of pulling. I don't know why. I've never had this happen before. Um, it confuses me greatly. But it's off now. Um, and really this grease doesn't look too bad. But since we pulled it off and it is old grease, we will entirely redo the or repack these bearings um so though you have to get this front plate off which it did not come off so we're going to take the bearings out and we're going to go and just beat it senseless until we get this plate off this is all really really thick steel so the likelihood that we are able to bend this is very small so, but make sure if you, if you have this issue, take your bearings out first, because otherwise you're going to fill your bearings up with dirt and everything, and you don't want to do that. So, we're going to take this out and get to banging. Okay, guys. So, got the spindle all cleaned up. One just got the hub all cleaned out. You can see those bearing surfaces look nice and clean. I just gave these bearings a quick little break clean bath. And now it's time to repack them. So my go-to is almost always this red and tacky. It has a pretty high operating temperature um, and it's nice and sticky. Uh, so I'll show y'all uh, part of the way how I just fill these bearings up with grease. You don't want to just like slather them in grease. It doesn't really do anything. You got to actually pack them. So Lund, can you hold the uh, camera so I can show them? So you want to take a big old goop of this and you just kind of want to like see how the bearing can this outer race can kind of move a little bit peel it up and just like continually push it down onto that uh grease right there and by doing that you can 
So I don't know if you can see it, but there's grease that's starting to come up in between these rollers right here, all the way up to the top. That's how you know, and some of it's kind of coming out out here. That's how you know the bearings or the grease is actually getting inside the bearing. So I'll go through and do this all the way around. This is the inner bearing. I'll do it for the outer bearing, then stick some more grease, and then I'll get back to you and we're actually tightening it back down. Okay guys, got the bearings all packed. As you can see there's a lot of grease down in there. Uh, I globbed a whole bunch of grease down inside this hub. And I just set the inside larger wheel bearing down in there. Now we need to put this seal in there. So just take your seal, kind of set it down on there, and then just gently tap it down in there. Um, make sure when you're doing this, please remember to put your, your inner wheel bearing in before you do it, because otherwise you have to try and get the seal out without breaking the seal to then put your wheel bearing in and then take it back out, which isn't going to happen. So it really kind of takes two hands here to get this in, so I'm going to put the camera down and tap in this seal. Okay, so I just got the seal down in there. Um, you need to make sure you kind of hit it with something flat. Uh, I just took the old brake pad that we took out and just laid it on top and then used this uh, like soft blow hammer to tap it down in there. So, now we just need to flip this over put that outer bearing on um, but you'll kind of want to put that outer bearing on on the car so you'll want to slide this hub on then slide that outer bearing in the washer and then just take your lock nut and tighten it down and then <coughs> once we have that on there I'll tell you how tight you should try and make it okay so so you can see I have the outer wheel bearing in. Now, as you saw earlier, this whole hub assembly didn't really want to come out. Um, that's because this bearing was getting stuck on the threads, um, which meant also <clears throat> I just had to essentially kind of, I don't want to say press because it was very light touch, but I put the washer on in the nut and then just thread the nut on so that it would push it uh, in there. So I was going to show you all something that <coughs> I like to do. So once this is in there, I like to take another rather large glob of grease and just shove it right down in there. Um, so that when you press that washer down in there with the bolt, it has just a little bit more grease that it shoves into that outer bearing so that you uh, make sure you got plenty 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 of grease down in there because as the uh great jamie heineman said for mythbusters is when in doubt lubricate and that is very much the truth you do not want your wheel bearings going dry that will leave you for a very very unhappy day so at this point you'll just take your washer which i know looks dirty but i did clean it it's just because i uh it looks dirty because i stuck it on there so you press it down in there you can see it kind of sticks out all that excess grease take your locking nut which remember after i just sat i sat here for like 45 seconds off camera trying to get this started because this is reverse threaded and i had forgotten about that because alpha and the italians they do things a little differently um can't say much. Old Mopars pre like 1970, the wheel lugs were reverse thread on the driver's side of the car. Yeah, uh, I used to have a Dart and luckily mine was a 72. Uh, otherwise, I would have probably broken the wheel nuts off like a lot of people do uh, because I would have been trying to get it off and spinning them the wrong way. So, once you got that on there, take yourself a crescent wrench and just kind of tighten it down a little bit give it a little bit of a spin that actually that's too tight right there what I just did so back it off just a little bit get it there so essentially what you want is just with like kind of a moderate hit you want it to do like 
one full rotation. Just about like that. <clears throat> now, I'm going to leave it like that. Once you drive it though, you're going to need to drive it a while, you're going to need to pop this cap back off, and then you're going to need to adjust it again because they're going to kind of settle in. So once you do this, don't forget to put your carter pin back in. Uh, you'll not have a fun day. You do that because this lock nut will work itself off, then your wheel bearings will fall out. So do not forget to do that. Would you look at that, guys? We got these new rotors on there. The new lines are in there. Uh, the bearings have been repacked. So you all know what that means. It's time for one of my least favorite tasks, bleeding the brakes. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna show any of this. It's pretty straightforward. It's the same for all vehicles. Um, I would suggest if you don't know how to do it, go look at a video like Chris Fix or something on how to bleed the brakes. So I'll bleed the brakes and then I can show you all our test drive once we have it back on the ground. Okay guys, so the brakes are bled, mostly. Uh, so as many of y'all know, when working on a car, uh, well, stuff happens. So, back here in the back left corner, we were bleeding it, it was going okay, and it blew the seal on this caliper. So that caliper either needs to be replaced or rebuilt. Now, this isn't my car. I don't live here. I actually live very far away. So when this gets finished, I won't be the one filming this. Uh, it'll actually be uh, the owner of this car finishing it and he'll film the rest of it and he'll send it to me and I can edit it up and put it in the video. So for my part of the video at least, that's going to be it. Sadly, we wanted to uh, get a video of this car running and then take it to the dragon and have like an alpha rx7 video well that's not going to happen maybe we can have like a golf r rx7 dragon adventure so you know a sports car and a rabbit and we can we can do this so for uh for me this is it on this car okay guys where we left off we uh were bleeding the brakes and the left rear caliper seal blue so we had to order a new caliper and now that's installed we did not show the installation because we had showed that earlier in the video when we replaced on the other rotors but um that caliper's new caliper is now on and the brakes are bled and now we're going to take it for a test drive so we'll see you on the road so we're heading out on the first test drive after the installation of the new brakes and rotors on the alpha spider uh, what we'll do is um, break in the pads and rotors by speeding up to 30, 35 miles an hour and then breaking down to five, um, doing that two, three, four times, and then speeding up to 50 to 55, and again, breaking hard down to, to five miles an hour, uh, doing that four or five times, um, and then letting the brakes cool after that. Um, we should get a good test of the brakes initially going down my steep driveway. Uh, so we'll pick it back up as we're on the road.